All right, everybody, we did it. We swat it and shocked and smushed the invasive spotted lanternfly all summer long. And now that it's fall, we can surely say we're done here. Mission accomplished, right? No, I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, it's not under control at all. So what the hell are we all doing? This is Christy. I'm the director of the Bug Chicks. And Jessica. I am the assistant director of the Bug Chicks. They're both entomologists. But let's back up a second, because if you're not in the US, this whole video so far is kind of unhinged. Spotted lanternflies are a type of insect that's native to parts of Asia. They're actually really beautiful. The adults have spotted wings with a bright red underwing. They're super easy to recognize. And on some level, harmless. They don't sting or bite, and in their native habitat, their population is controlled by various predators. But when they're transported far away from where they have evolved, then that's where we run into problems. We don't have natural enemies to keep it under control. So their populations can just explode, which is what we're seeing right now. Egg masses on a shipment of stone are likely what brought the insect to the U.S. in 2012, but they were first found in eastern Pennsylvania in 2014. At that time, researchers tried to contain the population and potentially wipe it out entirely. The state quarantined the area, requiring all businesses to have a spotted lanternfly compliance permit to ensure they weren't carrying the bugs around and told people to kill them on sight. Many researchers were initially concerned these bugs would destroy native forest because they feed on tree sap. They kind of jam these little poking mouth parts called rostrums into a plant, which is filled with like sap and nutrients and, and they slurp it up. Also, their poo is basically sugar water. That can lead to something called sooty mold, which isn't harmful in and of itself to people, but it sort of tamps down on photosynthesis so the plants have to work harder to survive. Fortunately, the worst case scenario didn't come true. Landron flies haven't wiped out full forest. Instead, the biggest losses are to agriculture, specifically orchards and vineyards. Vineyards in Pennsylvania have been hardest hit so far with some reporting up to a 90% loss. And now they've spread. As of late 2022, spotted lanternflies have been reported in 14 states. Thus the widespread summer murder campaign on social media. At this point, it's too late to stop them completely. Eradication is not on the docket anymore. We missed that boat. That ship sailed. And so now it's about mitigation and management and control. Over time, some expect them to reach most of the country, eventually spreading to places like California where they could threaten a multi-billion dollar fruit industry. Though it could take them a few years to get there. Thankfully, lanternflies don't live very long and can only move about four miles in their entire lives. Unless they hitch a ride. Which means the biggest culprit responsible for this rapid spread is us. In more ways than one. Even before spotted lanternflies came to the U.S., damage humans have done to native ecosystems set the stage for them to thrive. One example of this is their favorite tree to feed on, the Tree of Heaven. And yes, it's also highly invasive. I mean, you want to talk about survivors. This plant, you cut it down and it's like, oh yeah? <laughs> this tree was brought to the U.S. from China over 200 years ago. It thrives in urban environments in areas with little vegetation like along railroads or highways, where it can act as a hotel for lanternflies as they make their way across the U.S. So what now? Recently, predators like praying mantis have started stepping in to help level out the numbers. Other bugs like garden spiders, hornets, and wheel bugs have also been seen attacking the spotted lanternflies. With the help of birds and other insects, over time, populations will likely taper off to more manageable levels. For now, the best method to manage spotted lanternfly populations is to simply keep crushing them. Don't resort to harsher methods like homemade pesticides or fire. And when traveling, make sure to check your car for stray bugs or egg masses. Any of the ones that you didn't smack down in the summer have mated and they are right now like 
literally right now they're laying eggs on any flat surface that they can and uh, they will overwinter and then hatch out in the spring and the whole system starts all over again. If you see an egg mass, scraping it into a bag with alcohol effectively kills it. But yeah, the scraping, the stomping, no flamethrowers. When we zoom out from just spotted lanternfly, we live in a world with potentially four million species of insects. And they are the decomposers, they are the pollinators, they are the recyclers of our world, and they create healthy soils that grow the trees. They are integral to every system on our planet. The real impact of spotted lanternflies on the system might not be measurable yet. Ecosystems are wildly complicated, and introducing a new species could have impacts we'd never expect on other bugs, on birds that eat bugs, on future flora development. In the meantime, slowing down their spread could help researchers devise new ways to eliminate this bug safely and give our native ecosystem what it needs. Time to catch up. They don't sting or bite. That's what it is. Yeah, Kim, they don't sting or bite, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Come on. Woo! Now I'm gonna feel bad about killing you because I have an emotional attachment to you.